Hello, my name is Ebenezer Safford. I'm a business strategy consultant and a data specialist. Um, if you've been following my channel, I've been dedicating this channel to train data analysts and data scientists, those who are very much in tune with the subject or probably just want to have an experience. Um, I give this opportunity for people. I've actually been doing videos on Power BI and had a guest tutor to do videos on Python. Today I have uh, one person that I'm interviewing and I'm so excited already interviewing her. She is in the person of Ruth Pozuelo Martinez. She's in Sweden. <laughs> I hope I got it right. Yes, you said it right. <laughs> okay, so she's one of the um, high-end users of Power BI, if I'm allowed to use such a word. Um, she's um, part of people, I think, try the Power BI features before we all do. So today I have a guest, Ruth Pozuelo. I've been following her on YouTube for a while. And so welcome, Ruth. Welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to your show. Really oh. pleasure. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> we are, I'm waving for them. Hi, Ruth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can add another hand. Hi. <laughs> Double hi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Ruth, welcome. And if you've not followed her on YouTube, kindly do that. The channel is Kebal. Just search Kebal on YouTube and subscribe. You, you, you would. I, I don't think anybody has done justice to um, DAX formulas like she has. If you know Power BI, you know DAX formulas. And she's actually taking each formula about 200 formulas already. I downloaded her whole content. So just follow her and you will never regret. At least Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you have something to get on Power BI. Thank and you. the latest is out, so make sure that you watch her videos. Let's see. <laughs> so Ruth Pozuelo Martinez. Nice name. Yes. Anyway. So tell us about yourself and like a brief introduction. Who you are? Who is Ruth? Yes, yes, yes. So as you very well pronounced and said, my name is Ruth Pozuelo Martinez, and I'm actually Spanish. So I was born in Spain, in the north of Spain, and uh, I left Spain to study. I was living in the UK for well, it was actually in Wales for a few years. And then uh, I moved to Sweden. I met my partner and I moved to Sweden. He was Swedish. And I am actually living in Sweden since then. So like 20 years back. <laughs> so so <la> <laughs> yeah. love sent you to Sweden. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was love imported to Sweden. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> All right. So your business background and... Yes, How? so mm -hmm. I am an engineer actually. I use, I have uh, two degrees. I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer from Spain and then I study aeronautical engineering in, in Wales. And uh, I have. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something <laughs> quite fascinating about data people. You know, we come from all kinds of backgrounds, really. So it is quite fascinating. It's like accounting, engineering, arts. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I hear, psychology, I, I think it's quite fascinating and nobody cares too much about, you know, what background you have, which is good. You know, in other wow. professions, you do have to have certain education before you can enter. I don't know, what is your background? Are you... Electrical engineering. You're an engineer also. <laughs> it's a numbers <laughs> frame, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, you know, nobody cares as long as you, you know, you, you're a good analyst and you can think with data. So I find it quite fascinating. So I work as an engineer and then I uh, was promoted to manager. I worked for a small company at the beginning and then I moved to an international company, got some training in, um, within Lean Six Sigma, 
which I find very, very, very interesting. interesting. And then at my work, I started using the uh, Power Pivot, Power Query add-ins in Excel. In Excel. Yeah. That was, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, probably. And I have to say, I did not enjoy Power Pivot at all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the DAX was so complicated. You know, you had a real job. I had a real job. So that data was something that I just needed On to do side. my job. Yeah. It was not my <laughs> my profession. So it was too hard for me. So it was actually Power Query that made me fall in love with Power BI, to be honest. When, oh. Then once you start learning in DAX, you understand how good it is and the things that you actually can do with it. So it takes a little bit of effort, but it's definitely worth it. Wow. Yeah. So through your work, you discovered Power Query, then through to Power BI. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. But I mean, what caught your attention with Power BI? What? It was it was Power Query actually. I remember. I I clearly remember. I was at lunch when mm -hmm. my previous work. And then I was at lunch myself because, you know, I had meetings all day and then I had like a window of lunch. I went, I ran to the restaurant, had lunch, and then I had this video because I needed to do some cleaning for my work of data. And then I saw a guy, I wish I would have that video, I would save it because somebody <laughs> was explaining what I, it was a query explorer. I don't remember what Power Query was called before, but it was like a, you know, a pre-Power Query version. And I remember running to my desk because I was like, oh my God, this thing is amazing. <laughs> like the things that I could do with Power Query as a business user for me was mind blowing, <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> and then you did wow. them once, right? And then you click a refresh button and then it happened again. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't have to clean everything every time. And that was, you know, and I was working actually for a American company, so I could join the better version of Power BI. You had to have an American email, and I had that, so I joined that. And at the beginning, obviously, Power BI was very limited. It was not like Excel because they were just developing it, but eventually it caught up with Excel, and now in, in some aspects, we, it's actually better. Yeah, I watched your video on when you compared Excel to Power BI and when to use <laughs> the two, which one is better? And I remember you ending by saying whichever works. Yeah. You use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it, they they have different strengths, both tools, and you have to know what you want to do, and then pick the tool that does it best, basically. So I don't think one is better than the other. It's just different things. But there are, you know, for example, Power Query. They have developed it more in Power BI than Power in BI. Excel. So Excel is trying to catch up to that work. So, <laughs> but, but I I don't know. I, I still, you know, when I work now with Excel, I just, I, I just rewire my brain somehow because I wasn't good at Excel before. <laughs> but now when I open Excel, they're like, how did you do that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I have to open you found a new love. Yeah. You found a new love, so yeah. it's pretty much the same for me today at the workplace. I wonder why people still use Excel for what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I try to dissuade people that why would you still use Excel? But I mean, it's pretty much amazing after you start using Power BI and it's been a good tool. I mean, so the other side is, so after Power BI, how did you start learning Power BI? I mean, how did you learn Power BI? Yeah, it, it was a bit, you know, it, for me, the, the learning process started with Excel because I started with Excel, you know, with the add-ins. And there was not a lot of information back then of, not of anything, basically. So for DAX, it was just like Power Pivot Pro, the SQL BI guys and not much more. So you have very limited sources. You know, now you, you go in Google and Google, you have like a 100,000 results, right? 
<laughs> but I was not before. So it was uh-huh. it was more difficult before, I would say, because there was not too much on the web. But now, after ten years, obviously, you know, the Power BI community, I think, is fabulous for learning Power BI, because most of the time, somebody has asked the question that you have. You Definitely. will find the answer. Mm-hmm. So I think Power BI community is the best of Power BI, to be honest. But before it was just trial and error. You, you, you just have to bang your head to your table and try to get it working. It was like, oh my God, how do you do what? And you know, Power Query and M, still M today, is not very well documented. So you have to... You, guess a little bit and, and try and see if it works and search on, on the web. Um, yeah. <laughs> How do you do? How I mean, are you learning? That's the beauty of um, data analysis. I mean, everywhere, data science. It's more of a try and error. You learn on your own. You make mistakes. It works. Sometimes you don't even know how it worked. And you move. <laughs> True. Yeah, 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 that's true. You, you know, sometimes I do some tasks and I have no idea how that worked. They're like, okay, it worked. I'm happy. Let's forget about it. <laughs> <I'll> move on. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Um, I think that you normally attribute, like, I mean, now that we are into Power BI, normally attribute the DAX language as higher than calculus. <laughs> 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 I, I saw an image like that. You said algebra or something, something. You end with calculus. You said DAX is about calculus. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what yeah, makes, there I was mean, some. Makes uh, that, mm-hmm. Yes, sir. What makes DAX that you say is more than calculus? What's what's it about DAX? Yeah, well, it, it is not. It is not difficult. More difficult than calculus. But, and there were some people that got uh, upset <laughs> about that, you know. <laughs> like, are you really telling me that? No, it, it was it was a, a slight joke. But the the difficulty with DAX is it does things in the background without you seeing it, and it works with tables and columns rather than cells, like we're used in Excel. So it takes a while to understand how it actually works. And because you don't see anything, you just see a number, a result, the result back is a number. You, you create an, a, like a DAX calculation is this big and then you get 34. Just uh-huh. one. <laughs> okay. 34, go how? You know, and you have to start figuring it out. How did the tables filter? You know, the relationships run between the tables. Then you have to try to troubleshoot and try to figure it out what went wrong along the way and it's not that easy so I think it just it just takes a little bit of theory before you can actually start understanding DAX and because it looks like Excel you get fooled a little bit you think like oh this is you know it's sum we all know sum from Excel but then when you put sum in sum it (laughs) <laughs> exactly. And then you have, you start thinking, like, why do I have two sums? That should give you a hint that sum perhaps is not sum. And then they called sum, which should have been called sum x. You know, the change, sum should be sum x and the other one should be sum, in my opinion, yeah. because of where you do the row by row. But uh, it is it is worth learning. That's the thing. It will give you superpowers in your analysis if you learn. You will be able to do amazing calculations that otherwise are not possible. That's so it, it's worth the time. People should, if you're working on Power BI, you should learn DAX. Be sure. All right. So, so what? I mean, coming into DAX, I mean, we've talked about Power BI. If you are not a Power BI user, I think this is the time to get Power BI download. It's free. I've done a video on that. I'm sure Kebal too has done videos on that. You can get the intro. I mean, I've done a five-day video just to help new users. But there's a lot and ton of information out there that you can always get. It's a very good tool, and anybody that uses it becomes an evangelist for it. That's how pretty much I would say. And people are selling 
the product because they love using it. So if you have to get it. But what we are talking about currently is the DAX language, which is used to do calculations in Power BI. And one, that's one of the major um, strengths I see in Ruth because she's done so many videos on that. So basically, Ruth, if you were to, let's say, teach a beginner, a child in Power BI DAX, what would be your first or major statements that you would make? Like, what would you tell or used to teach? somebody who wants to learn DAX. Yeah, I, I think the first concept that needs to be understood is just that it's not a cell by cell calculation like you would do in, in Excel. You have to get out, you have to unlearn what you learn from Excel and relearn something new. And the sooner you realize that, the less frustrating it will be because thinking that it's going to work like Excel is going to fool you quite a long time because there's a lot of quite many things that you can do the Excel way. So I, I would start just doing the typical thing, just putting the sum on a calculated column and then putting sum X and then putting calculate with sum and, and trying to explain that. You know, what makes powerful DAX is that one function, and I have a video on that, that I don't know, it was like, a month ago or something, one function <laughs> will give you a lot of different results depending on what you put around it. Okay. Right? Yeah, I think so I watched that video, yeah. Yeah, you remember? I think it was like previous month that I used. I, I don't remember yeah. exactly. And you but put the previous filters. month by itself is one thing. Previous month with on a table is another thing. Previous month on a card will give you another thing. And you have to start understanding that that a measure is not like in Excel, you put it in there and it will always give you the same. In DAX it won't. So you have to check and because this is for self-service and people are supposed to create their own reports, we need to make sure that the calculations will work, no matter what put, what people put in on the, on the visual. It just can get complicated. But just go through the, the normal traps that you will have when you start learning DAX. How, how would you learn teach tax to a, to a beginner? How would you do that? Um, <clears throat> like you rightly said, it's you have to unlearn a lot. And if you are coming from an Excel background, it can pretty be. You wonder, this is simple in Excel. How come they would have to? You have to go through all that. <clears throat> but it's like you're saying, if you learn it, it has so much power. But normally what I would actually act, tell people is that it's a language, just like any language, there's a syntax. That means there's an order. Like when you're learning English, you start with A, B, C, the alphabet. And in DAX, the alphabets are the formulas. So you need to understand what each formula mean and what would you get by and then you start combining them so you start with just the alphabet which is the formulas so you start with some like you just said which is a formula you start with average so i have normally i use your table you know you have this table on um in power bi which shows the various functions grouped in date with a slicer on the top that you can select date filters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I use that also to teach yeah, and show them that, okay, so if <laughs> if you're talking about dates, this is what the functions that you, so it's just like any language. You start with the alphabet, you understand what the alphabets mean, and now you start combining them. Uh, A comes maybe, if I want to mention a ball, B-A-L-L, -L. so B comes before A and L-L. -L. And you now start writing sentences, which is the variables. And so basically, it's just about languages. So you start from the alphabet and then you grow. That is a great analogy. Thank you. I never thought of it like that, but it's, <laughs> it's a really good way to explain it. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> so, but I mean, then as you read more books, you become better. So the books are going to Kebal. Like, I mean, when we were kids, we were told that if you read more story books, your language becomes finer. So today, the books are going to Kebal's site on and downloading them, watching her videos. 
watching guy in the cube and the other guys and you become better yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 practice especially practice 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 there's yeah, something that you said <laughs> there are things that you said i want to retreat just for my viewers sake um one is the fact that people you know beginning you said something very remarkable that people in data don't necessarily come from one background it's probably the most um heterogeneous diverse. <laughs> <laughs> diverse industry in the world currently you see people starting with finance and end in data analysis people with engineering like you and i and in even medicine and in did health <laughs> sciences you could be yes, that i read <laughs> even yeah. acted yeah you could be an actor you want data you're running with data you just i read a book by a statistician a phd statistician who said she was a statistician but had to learn and come into data science like a new thing altogether because mm -hmm. it's more of tools driven so you needed to unlearn and relearn and that's one thing you said the second is the fact that especially when you are learning that on learn and relearn which is very key yeah and Practice, practice, practice. No other way. I, <laughs> the it, more you practice, it. the better you get, right? But that's with everything in life, with learning how to write, learning how to run, learning how to cook. I mean, you do a new dish once and it will probably not taste that good. But once you've done it 20 <laughs> times, it might start getting there, you know, getting better. At the, how much salt, how much, what it, so the data is the same. Practice, practice, practice. And the more you practice, it, the better you get at it. Even if it, sometimes you feel that you're not, you're not learning, you know, when you're learning, it starts going very, very fast. And then sometimes you feel like you plateau, you, the, Pick, nothing happens. You plateau. Right? And then suddenly something yeah. clicks, something like, oh, I think I just leveled <laughs> up. And then you, <laughs> you start again growing. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I get that. <laughs> Yeah, I understand what you're saying very well because it's like you get to a particular point, it's hard to learn anything new, and you it seems you are not growing. Yeah. But then one thing comes and you're like, wow, now yes, I have. <laughs> 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 it's more like an S, maybe not an S curve, um, where you get to the, it's like you start with an exponential growth, you get to a point, and it's very hard from that point to grow again. Yeah, and it's like plateauing yeah. to start another level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, now you've talked about that, which is more of the um, actual modeling and using in Power BI. But what do you think are the main challenges in learning DAX? Like if you learning DAX, like some of the things that one should look out for when they are learning DAX. As in challenges. <laughs> The challenges are just what I mentioned before that you do not see what the DAX engine is doing in the background. What it happens is when you are putting things into your canvas filters and columns and things like that, there is a table that is being created in the background that gets filtered by whatever it is you are doing in the in the visual pane and whatever relationships you have in the model. And it would be fantastic if we could actually see that table, like really see it, like and really see, see it happening. getting smaller, and you know, because it's making calculations on tables. That's what DAX does, or on columns, depending on how you write it, right? So if we could actually see that thing and say, oh, I'm going to put country, and then you see that it filters by country. But, oh, now I have this table, <laughs> right? Because now we have to do it our heads, and it's quite hard. Because, you know, it's very difficult, especially if you have like these gigantic models that you have relationships that extend to different tables because everything gets filtered depending on how your relationships are. It's very difficult to predict what the table is actually that you are creating. So hopefully in the future <laughs> we will get something like that, that we can actually Maybe see what's going on. See what is going on. <laughs> but until then we have to just try to try to visualize I, that's how the, my brain works anyhow I, I try to create the table by using the, as you said the functions the DAX functions 
then I say, okay, I need to remove all the filters that are in there. So I put an old, and then I, I imagine my table, you know, without no filters. And then I said, oh, and enough of these, but only on the last line. So I have to, you know, get the last line first. So how do I do that? Maybe last non blank, but depending on what you're trying to do. <laughs> so to do that, the best advice I would say is like, do it in pieces. Don't try to write, you know, nobody writes a DAX measure like this and then it starts to write lines like that. What you do is like, okay, I need to have the last value. How do I do that? And then I need to filter it by country and then only for customers that have, I don't know, sales over 10,000. So you need to first figure out what sales over 10,000 measure is, right? And then you can put it into your yeah. big measure. So you, you do yeah. bits and pieces and then you put it together. They say here in elephant that in Sweden that to eat an elephant you have to cut it in pieces, <laughs> something like that, right? <laughs> okay. So what you're saying is, even though you might want to write a very complicated and complex that, just start with the pieces and see what it returns, and then aggregate them together to have exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. Right. And that that is the easiest way to learn it, do, or to actually make something that. Then the, the issue is that when you're putting functions together, sometimes they affect each other, so you will have to account for that. But if you do it step by step, you will be able to understand what's going on, at least at what point is my formula not working anymore, and what should I do, instead of just... Tch -tch -tch. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm sure, I mean, watching others do it, and asking questions in the community is another thing, I'm sure. Yes, 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 definitely. The, the, the only problem with DAX and the Power BI community is that you get the chunk, right? You get the, the entire DAX measure already made, yes. baked and, and ready. And then when you put it into your plate, it doesn't fit. It's, it's too big or too small. It meaning that your model doesn't look like the same as the model that the person who created. So it doesn't work. And then you have to deconstruct the measure to see where it doesn't work. So that that is the issue, right? If you would do it yourself, you start with the pieces and then put it together so you know where you're having troubles. When you get just one ready-made, you just don't know. And then you have to break it apart and, and try to see, okay, what is not working for me? And it's also why it's so important to, when you are asking questions in the Power BI community, especially for DAX, but it actually applies for almost everything. You need to give details because one model or another will give the same DAX calculation on one model or another, depending on the tables and the relationships, will give different results. Yeah. <laughs> so I you need to say, this is how my model looks like, this is how my data looks like, and this is what I'm trying to do. This is the only way, otherwise you're going to get Whatever. Tons of. <laughs> and it may work or may not work. Yeah. Okay. So that's about that. Let's do a little on. Currently, you've been doing some videos on M query, the M language also. And um, the M language actually is the language behind the query editor. And it's drag and drop for most users, but. Yeah. For advanced users like you, you're able to decode the M language. How did you learn the M language also? Try and error. <laughs> <laughs> there is very the little documentation on, on M. Very, very little. So, very. yeah, I actually printed the manual. There is a manual on the basics of M and try to understand done a little how it works, how M engine thinks, and then it's try and error. You just guess how it should work and then you try it and if it doesn't work, you maybe remove a parenthesis and put one or do a curly bracket and, and cross your fingers and say, I hope it works. <laughs> uh, the, the, the interesting thing about writing um, codes with like any programming language is you could be on it for days and you can't yes. sleep. Do you also get that yeah. when you're solving problems and you don't know the solution? Yes, and I dream about it. It's like, oh my God, stop it, stop. 
<laughs> so we want to dream about this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, so let's go to visualizations because yeah. lately you've also been talking on some. Um, I think I see Rosalind behind you, so I know where your inspirations are coming from. <laughs> from visualization, because uh, he's one of the very authorities on visualization. So when it comes to visualization, what would be your advice, your hacks for visualization? Mm, that, you know, visualization is a tough topic because a lot of people that are using Power BI are very technical very good technical, you know, a lot of M, a lot of DAX, a lot of modeling, probably came from the SQL world. And when it comes to visualization, you have to think about or use the soft skills, you know, like who is going to read this report? And what are they going to use it for? And in that case, what type of information should I show and how? I think you froze. Are you still there? No, sorry, here. Hello. Hi. What I thought what that happened? I lost you. <laughs> what happened? No, I don't know. You just disappeared. Whoa. <laughs> I'm back. So, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I, I just vanished. So you were talking about uh, a lot of um, Power BI users being technical with regards to visualization. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so when it comes to visualization, it's more about, in my opinion, soft skills. You know, you have to think about your users, think about who they are, and think about what they want and how they want to see the information. So it's not about just, okay, and this was one of my problems in the beginning too, because you cleaning, modeling, and creating DAX calculations that when you actually get to the visualization part, you're you're up to here. You, you just want to do something else, you know? You're like, come on. Do I now have to spend how much in to do what? But that's the most important part for me in a project because that's what your users are going to consume, your visualizations. The rest is nice, and of course it has to be performant, otherwise they won't use it. And, you know, I'm not saying it's not necessary, it is. But at the end of the day, they are there for the visuals. They are there for the information. And it has to be done in a way that they can consume it in the way they need it. So do they need to consume it on the mobile phone? Are they going to be on the go? In that yeah. case, you need to have it in one way. Is it going to be on a tablet or on a PC? So you have to think about where they're going to consume it, how are they going to do it? They are going to do it only on the meeting, so they need a lot of filters just to find the information. Or do they want to explore the data, go into depth? For example, quality dashboards are like that. Why did my machine break? When did it break? How many pieces? What pieces? Do they break often? They, they want to be able to have that information. But if it is just a quality manager, they want to know how much it costs, how many breaks, 
and are we doing something about it, right? So depending on who the person is, you will see different needs. So that is the, the, the most important part. And then you have the aesthetics, you know, the colors and, and the backgrounds and the flashy things. And, and that's a tough thing because you, you, you need to have a little bit of education. I don't have it and I ask for help. So if I need to do something that I think like, oh, this is out of my water, I hire a, you know, a designer. A designer, yes. Or if the customer has a marketing department, I ask help from the marketing department because they normally have a designer or they have guidelines as to how they want things done. And I have them help me to make the thing beautiful. The right colors and the right backgrounds and whatever it is, the branding of the company and that stuff. So you need to spend as much time building the report as building the visuals if you um, want to have it a really good report and that is tough I, yeah very tough getting that all in one person and that's one thing that i'm always amazed at how you're able to do all three so brilliantly because you normally you're very good with m in a certain way you're good with dax functions and visualization i remember the premier league the world cup and even the remake of the COVID dashboard, the remake of the health. Um, I think we had to do with some life expectancy video by um, the um, mm -hmm. Gardner team. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that shows your appreciation for art also. So I wonder how you're able to combine that in one person in Ruth who is able to do excellently <laughs> with M um, excellently with, because usually people are good with one, they just do one and focus on that. Or some are just like guy in the cube, they are very good with the tool itself. But you're able to dovetail between the tool, the BI, the visualization and the business side. How do you do that? Thank you, thank you. Um... The, for the business side, I, I've been in the business, you know, I come from the business side, so it comes naturally to me to guess what somebody would like from the quality department or from the marketing department. I've worked with them, I've, I mean, I've, I've seen what they need and with their help and talking to them, we can find easy what they need. When it comes to the technical part, I, I'm not you know, because you see the videos, you think that I'm better than I am. I, I get help from the Power BI community, from all the MVPs, from everybody else as much as anyone. I Google a lot, so I'm not that good as it looks. But, I, you know, I get help <laughs> as needed. And from the visualization, I get help too. So if I, if I you know, I do the basic format and I say, I would like to have it like that. And then I send to a designer and say, hey, make it beautiful for me because I don't have those skills. <laughs> I don't. Definitely. I Because I work with a team currently too. So what we do is that some may join this, some may join that after the system is moved to another place. Use <laughs> the strengths of each of people in the team in order to get it done. I think it's better. So if you're very good yeah. at them, if somebody is good at you know, design or visualization, let them do that. And together you create something that is very good for your users. At the end, it's just we have to remember, you know, sometimes we get caught up into all these stacks and M and modeling thing. At the end, it's just that the users need to get the information. Are they the getting key. it? And does it help? <laughs> wow. Wow. So that's another takeout that in as much as you are loving your modeling and your transformation as an analyst, remember the end is the decision to be made the action to be taken because I mean from the business perspective that's the basic thing that after all the said and done what decision and what information and insights are you given the exactly answer? are you taking any like, decision? yeah continue yeah no no exactly what you were saying you know you have to go back to your report and ask them like was it useful did you take it? Because they can say yes, but they just look at it and close it and went for a coffee. That's not useful. 
Even though there are <laughs> dashboards that should be just for information, that's fine. But you know, you ha you want them to take action on whatever they see. They open the Power BI report and say, "Oh my gosh, I need to go and fix that." Or, "Oh, I didn't know that. Why don't we do this?" You know, they should be able to to do something with the information that they've got. Did they learn something new? Or is just okay? Yes, it's going up as we expected, and nothing else <laughs> happens. They're like, oh, okay. So I spend three weeks doing this, and this is like you're going to close the power BI file in, in a second. <laughs> How dare you? Because probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I get you. Because if they don't consume, it's like you've wasted your time in a certain sense. Yes. So and it is, a pity. it is a pity for us. We put so many effort into those reports to make sure that they perform well. Because the question we want to know that did it help? Wow. So that, that's that's very insightful, especially from the business point of view. Yeah. At the end of the day, is the action and the decisions to be made. You want the user to say, "Wow, I never saw that." I never knew this was what was the issue. Exactly. That's the, <laughs> not, oh, we already know this. I mean, not telling us. <laughs> I remember an analysis we did for a client on supply chain and was like, wow, what you're saying is true. And they were like, oh, this is it. These drugs, wow, this is where we need, no wonder. Uh, drag, then you are happy as a designer. <laughs> right? Not, you must have been like over the moon happy, right? Over the moon happy. Like, they were like, and they started drawing insights that we ourselves did not know because we're not, it was in a pharmaceutical industry, so we probably did not understand it better. So they were like, all these drugs are particular types of drugs, and that is why. And we did ABC, we did um, um, FNB, um, fast moving, non moving, AFNS, FSN, and fast moving, slow moving, non moving items for them so as they can take that decision and XYZ, which items have high demand, low demand, and no demand at all, variable demand. So they were very much. Amazed, like wow, they can draw that. Yes, yes. So and I, I can imagine you were very proud of your work, right? That's what the, yeah, that's yeah. the best feeling ever when you see your customers <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, in your work, what has been your most insightful work you've done so far? Just like what I said currently with mine. Oh, I'm not sure about how much I can talk about the work. Um, but not sure. <laughs> not sure if I can talk you know, about You have in the A's about everything. I'm, I'm not sure how sensitive it is <laughs> to talk about it. I guess. But I'm asking, okay, what kind of insights do you normally draw for your customers? What is the most fascinating insights that you can do for your customers? I so think what kind of analysis do you do? For, for the work that I have done is often the visualization part is like, oh, you see it like that? You know that you can actually start seeing the data not in a bar chart. It's not nothing wrong with bar charts or line charts. You can do wonderful things with that, but just visualize, visualizing data in a different way. And you know, a lot of people contact me and they say, "Hey, really, come, come on, this is so annoying because I do something, and then they say, okay, I want to know this also, and I want to. Why is this like that? And can you also do a calculation on this? And can you do a calculation of that?" <laughs> And I always tell them, like, God, you've done a good job. If they are asking for more, it means that you got their attention. Right? <laughs> yeah. And that's your job. That's your job to want them to know more, to want them to know, oh, how about this? And how about that? Then you're actually doing your job. That's the best 
thing that it can happen to a data analyst that somebody goes back and say, hey, I want to know everything, show me, right? Yeah. So we should I mean, that's, that's, like you said, that's true. That's what you want to get. You want to get at least a feedback. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you want them to be curious and to, to want to learn more. You know, oh, can I also know how, what it is by region? And oh, I would like to know what happens to with my, what is my top selling customers? And by the way, now that you are there, can you also do? And I understand that you can become a little bit annoying for a data analyst. You're like, okay, I thought I was done with this project. But that's when the fun starts in reality, because you're actually helping the business users discover something that they didn't know and maybe create a competitive advantage in their business. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So, I would say the beauty is that when actually the data is used to drive the bottom line of the company, for instance, mm -hmm. maybe do something and their sales grow by 20% or profit grows by 10%, then there is value for what you're doing. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. The bottom line. Sure. Okay. So what? You talked about line graphs and bar graphs, and we know in visualization in Power BI there are um, other visualizations that one can. I mean, tell me like on top of mind, like four or five visualizations that you are so fanciful to you, like they blow your mind in its usage. Mm, for custom visuals. Yeah, custom visuals. Oh, custom visuals. Um, normally, the custom visuals I use are the ones that are created by Microsoft only, um, because I know they will not break ever. And I think the certified visuals nowadays do not break either. To be honest, I think I just I'm not updating that anymore. But there is. There's actually a few that I have. You know that now you can pin custom visuals into. Yeah into Power BI. I have a few pinned. I, I just don't remember which one they are because I feel like they are out of the box for me, you know, because I are there. But I know that I've seen them, so I don't have a few. I, I don't remember which one they are. Uh, I don't know. I like the pulse chart. Have you used it? The pulse chart? Pulse chart. It's also made by Microsoft, so it's like a line chart but you can add events to it, so it, it will become animated, so you, you can just start seeing moving and then it stops and then you can, it displays text and then it continues and stops and display text. No, pulse spell? Very, yeah, pulse, P-U-L-S-E. Wow, pulse. okay, that's something. It's nice. actually very, very nice uh, chart. I don't particularly like the look and feel of it, but this is just very, very useful chart just because it, it animates. I really like this is not a Microsoft one. Is the animation? How how did they call it? I don't know what is it called, but the, you can animate the data in, in your model. It's like a play button and then you click it and then it animates stuff. Wow. Ah, uh, yeah, the the bar play chart, access. the play axis. Yeah, yeah. Play axis, maybe. Yeah, play axis of use. Yeah. It's actually quite nice because it allows you to walk people through the data instead of just boom, here you have everything, a million of rows in, in three graphs. It just walks you through and you see things and you can see, for example, trends or depends on what you are actually playing. You, you can get quite nice insights anyhow from that. So I, I enjoy that a lot. Wow. What is your favorite custom visual? Um. I think it was the animated bar chart race that it goes and moving by the year. It's like the one they use for the world's richest people over a period of years. So maybe you see the world richest person, 96, top 10 richest people and or let's say, um, let's oh, say top yeah, 10 that's... companies. Yeah, mm, the animated bar chart the... race. I think for like the one race. Of, race. Yeah, the animated bar chart race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there is actually a YouTube channel that does only, only race chart, Custom. and they have like millions of views and subscribers. They don't do anything wow. else. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
crazy. People just like to see. I don't know. Wow. That's specialization. You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's an open university out there, so that's the beauty of it. Okay, so well, too soon we're coming to an end, but I'm now going to take some, um, especially today being World Women's Day, International mm-hmm. Women's Day, mm-hmm. and <laughs> so I'd like to take like your take on women in data analysis, especially because some run away because of the coding and the data stuff like you being a role model in there what would you tell ladies for stuff like this especially probably yeah so what what is my take on women and data yes i mean what advice would you give young women and ladies to yeah being come to this particular sector or industry yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, as I mentioned before, you know, the data world is very, very diverse. We come from all kinds of backgrounds and we're accepting each other. No, nope. I've never heard anybody say like, why are you in data? You are a chemist, right? Or you're a lawyer. What are you doing here? I mean, everybody's happy with whatever background you have. Maybe because it is so new and there are no degrees like formal university. Yeah, formal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so everybody's happy. So I would say that if you have a passion for working with data, visualizing data and conveying information, helping people to understand, you know, we, we live in a data-driven world now more than ever. Charts are using everywhere to give us information about anything. And they are doing it in a good way. But they are also doing it in a very misleading way. As yes. we, you know, we see every Wednesday with those misleading charts, which is scary. I'm, I'm actually scared when I go through one of those videos and I see how easily you can fool people with data. And it's a number, so you get numbers have authority somehow that you just see a number, and you believe in it. But you see a chart and oh, but somebody made a chart, it must be right, right? <laughs> so who am I to question? <laughs> So it is so important that we learn how to read data. You don't necessarily need to be on the data profession, but you definitely need to know how to read data so we don't get fooled by governments, by you know companies or whatever it is. We have to also take very special care into our private data. We are giving away our data, our lives, like cause nothing. Thankfully, in the EU, they are putting you know protections. But I think they should be put everywhere in the world. The data should be used responsible. I actually was thinking that, you know, like doctors, they need to sign a paper saying that whatever they are going to do, they are going to do it in good faith and they are not going to kill yeah, people. I think data people that. should have the same. We should have also to sign a document that says like, hey, we're going to be responsible in how we communicate data and to what purpose we use our data for. It should be actually quite nice because, I mean, you can do, I mean, sometimes I read what Facebook is doing with the data and it's just so scary. And nobody's- I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I read a book recently on how these data products are programming everybody Everybody. in a certain way. Everybody is being programmed, and so that's like you're saying. Some ethics have to become part of data science people. So as the ethics of human, like I mean, looking at human lives, that data is not used in the disadvantage of humanity instead of improving the lives of people. Because now, just a number, just a statistic, just drive growth, just by anyhow, any means, whether it's causing depression whether it's causing people not to be so it's like you create a new world which is far from reality but the people are forced to believe because you own the data and you are the one telling them what it is exactly so i agree with you the fact that one of the takeouts for data analysts now is to probably look at the ethics side and yeah know that it, we could cause harm with the data that we put out there and how we use the data especially yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's very, 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 very important, and it's getting it's going to get even more important now as we are collecting data 
everywhere. You know, companies are collecting data about us. What are they doing to their data? And when you sign a contract nowadays, I don't know if it is the same where you are, but here you have to, there is a clause that it says, we have right to use your personal data. Right? Yeah, they are no, everybody is, yeah. So uh, to, to what extent, to do what? <laughs> right, because you can use that data in all kinds of ways. Microsoft launched not so, I haven't heard so much about it actually afterwards. They launched it and then they were quiet. But they were actually providing information about how much teams were your team using, how long we're connected, how many teams they have. And I think that's dangerous. It doesn't give you any insight as to if that person is productive or not. So why would you? Thinking if you get fired because you are not enough on Teams, you're like, come Imagine. on. <laughs> and now you're being run by someone's algorithm to determine whether you are working right or not, even if the any other thing is showing otherwise. Exactly. Or it's and I remember you, you are creating that, that algorithm as a data analyst, right? Yeah. And me too. Yes. We are creating those things that are helping yes. people make data decisions with data. So what decisions and to what purpose? Yes, it's very important. And how and can that's we say so? Your, your take on the responsible responsibilities of data analysts should be very taken much critically again by the regulatory bodies because it's getting quite scary. Very. People, yeah. Like you're saying, I mean, there's so much power with people build models and algorithms now that they can practically control everything we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And remember, it's not people, it's you and me. We are being. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we are the. <laughs> yeah. We are the data yeah. analyst. Yeah, and whatever yeah. we're building, we are helping companies do something. And it is our responsibility to make sure that whatever we build for them, it is ethically right. Right. And there should be, that's why I said that there should be a contract that it would allow us to say no and not don't get fired because we say no. Yes. Right? Yes, because I, I agree. I mean, we should be held responsible. To your family, you need to support them. How do you say no? Yeah. <laughs> I get you. So, I mean, that's the final part of what you said. And I think regulatory body should, and we should be responsible as data analysts, because first we are humans, we are people, we should think about the effect of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. to, it may make you some bucks today, but know the effect on generations to come. Mm -hmm. I always say like, even for instance, if you write a wrong YouTube algorithm, you decide who watches my video. Yeah. And maybe because you want to monetize, you want videos that probably are highlighting some irrelevant stuff to be promoted over good content that would rather promote people to a certain height. So all these things are things we need to, because you see today, everything is trending. <laughs> and you wonder how do these things get trending? It's because of the algorithm. Mm -hmm. It makes things that are untrue even trend. And we need to be you know, there's response. an interesting story about YouTube and trending. They had uh, flat earth. There is a flat earth society. You know what that mm -hmm. is? It's like, no. uh, you know, people that believe the earth is flat. Okay. So whatever we think about that, there's people that believe <laughs> that it's flat. <laughs> and they started to do videos on YouTube promoting the earth is flat. Like, okay. And obviously people are curious if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'm going to tell you why the Earth is flat, people watch. Yeah. Just because you're curious, it doesn't mean that you believe that the Earth is flat, but you're curious. Yeah. So those videos got a lot of views. What does the algorithm do when a video gets a lot of views? More people are showing it too. It, yeah, <laughs> it goes on trending and it goes on trending for a long time. And you start monetizing, you get a lot of money, and the the more videos they got about, you know, the algorithm got the signal. Oh, flat Earth video, we we Scott. promoted people like that <laughs> stuff, and suddenly this small organization, there there was a small group of people that were talking about this, began to grow 
in numbers that were quite big. And people started like, this is not right. You cannot promote this. You know, you can't because the, the earth is not you flat. Not <laughs> so you're promoting <laughs> lies. So wow. they actually start to, they, they put in place uh, mechanism right. to prevent at least manually this type of content to trend on YouTube. But they got a lot of new members just by trending on YouTube. So that's one of the responsibilities, like we're saying, we can't take the human out of the algorithm because we know what should be. So even though you automate, you do algorithms, have that human check manually sometimes just for you to correct some of the things that because the algorithm would not know the outliers in your model. Maybe that your model is not even working, but mm -hmm. because the product People are for, like you just said, the fact that video is trend does not mean the algorithm is good. Exactly. It, it could be trending wrong videos. In yeah. the end, people are forced to watch it because that is what is trending. Mm -hmm. So it's like you are, for, you are creating the data yourself and in the end it makes it look like that is what is working. So we have to be responsible. I think it's been a long and nice chat. Thanks. So viewers. Safe. <laughs> this has been Ruth Pozuelo Martinez. I've had so much insight today on Power BI and data analysis as well. And I'm happy to have you go and subscribe to her channel, Search Kebao, and you are going to be mind blown. Thank me for that <laughs> recommendation. You. I mean, I'm talking to my viewers always because she's good. She's really helped me in so many ways, challenged me to learn more on Power BI. Thank you very much, Ruth. And Thank you. I hope Thank you, everybody. I'll catch you some other time for a live demonstration of some of the things. All right. So let's. Thank you and subscribe to my channel also.